What's up learners, it's Brian. I'm here in Brazil for a master class with the Junior Salveira. I'm about ready to talk about my experience in Brazil as well as language and learning new languages. Make sure you subscribe and hit that like button and let's get started. Brian Kirkwood, come here Brian. Give it up. Welcome, Brian. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so, Junior said that I was new, but I'm not new to uh, Junior Saveda brand, right? Yeah. Uh, I've known, like he said, I've known Junior for almost 10 years. Almost 10 years. More than, More than that. Years. Yeah. So, I was with uh, around when Junior first started this yes. uh, journey of English, teaching English to you all online, and uh, I encouraged him and uh, believed in what he could do, and uh, he's here doing it, and I'm like, it's crazy to be here in front of you all. Yeah, so. it is. It's, it's really cool to see something uh, start like small and grow, and <clears throat> it's I'm getting emotional because it is a little emotional. Don't cry. <laughs> <laughs> but if, and, uh, if you see how much he works and how much he cares, he works too much. So, and uh, Alini will say this, uh, he works too much, but he works really hard. And I know that he, he does it to, before he was only teaching, oh, you know, the people he could drive to. He could, you know, meet them at their house or their business to te teach English, you know. Now he's able to touch hundreds of thousands of people. So it's, it's great. I'm so happy that you uh, invited me. <coughs> and uh, let's get started. Yeah. Thanks, Brian. Give it up one more time. <laughs> so, Alini, are you going to do my slides? Okay. So Alini is going to try to do my slides. So today I'm going to talk a little bit uh, about me and my experience growing up, uh, where I come from. Uh, but I also lived here in Sao Paulo for a year. So I'll talk a little bit about my experience living here in Brazil. Uh, I'm going to try not to speak too fast because I want you to understand as much as you can. So I'm going to go uh, slow. If I'm going too fast, you can let me know. And if you have a question, just pop your hand up. And we'll get a microphone, microphone over to you. If there becomes a lots and lots and lots of questions, then let's kind of save them to the end. Uh, okay? We'll just kind of read how it goes. So I am from Sacramento. So uh, who knows where Sacramento is? <laughs> Does anyone know in the United States? Where Sacramento? Who is? Raise your hand. Yes, where is it? California. California, that's right. So, Brazil is all the way down there. And uh, this was where I was born and raised. And uh, sometime in high school, I got this uh, passion for Disney, for Walt Disney. And so I studied, what is Walt Disney about? Uh, I always liked Disney movies, but I became more uh, interested in the man himself, Walt Disney. And I decided uh, I want to work for Walt Disney. So that took me uh, to Orlando eventually. You can back up one more. So I wanted to explain, I forgot, because I don't have the slides in front of me, I created the slides, but I don't have them uh, in front of me. So Sacramento, it's the state capital of uh, California. So like uh, Sao Paulo has a capital. What's the capital of Sao Paulo? Sao Paulo. Sao Paulo. Okay. So for California, the state capital is Sacramento. Okay. So growing up, and I'll speak briefly, I was a two-hour drive from Tahoe where they ski, you know, skiing uh, on the snow. I was only two hour drive to San Francisco and I was an hour flight to Los Angeles. So it was a perfect place to grow up. Uh, our parents, my sister and I, are, were very lucky. Our parents took us on road trips to see all of California. I've seen beautiful things, 
If you ever have the chance to go to California, you must go to California. Okay, next. You can show baby Brian. <laughs> so as I said, I always had an interest in Disney. And so I, in, in high school, I, the, the, the interest grew. And I said, let me work for the company. What's the next line? Orlando. 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 So <laughs> that took me to Orlando, where uh, that's eventually where I would meet uh, Alini and Junior. What's in Orlando? Or actually, where is Orlando? This is easier. Florida. So closer. Orlando is like uh, little Brazil. <laughs> There's lots of Brazilians. How, how do you know that a girl, a, a man is Brazilian? How do you know that? Uh, it's um, easier to tell a female is Brazilian. What do they look like? The hair. Uh, the hair? Yeah, let's see. Does anyone have... No. There's a, but highlights, lots of highlighted hair. She has. Yeah, Fernanda. Yeah, yes. And the, I keep pressing. And the uh, the shoe, the men's shoes. What's the company that starts with an O? Oh, Star. No, uh, the Brazilian shoe company. No, Os. No, not Melissa. Starts with O. Yes, I think that one. You know, the men wear the, the, uh, the shoes. Yeah, it's very Brazilian. So you can tell that they're Brazilian. Ah, but they speak Portuguese. So, uh, but that, that is where I live now. So what's in Orlando? What's in Orlando? Disney and the wizard, right? So all of this is right in uh, where I live. And how many have been to Orlando yet? Anyone? A few? Okay. Cool. You're going in October. All right, good. Shopping list. Shopping. Shopping list. I prepare my shopping list. So this is where this is where I worked. This is where Alini worked. Where Junior worked. We worked for uh, Disney here, and that's like I said, that's how I met them. So I worked seven years for Disney. I don't work there anymore, but I worked seven years. Uh, I worked at Magic Kingdom. These pictures didn't turn out as good as I hoped, but uh, Magic Kingdom. I worked at uh, Disney's Polynesian Resort, which is a hotel. And then I also had office jobs as well. So I had a variety of jobs in my seven years uh, with Disney. Really great experience. When I finished there, I uh, moved to Brazil. After my seven years there, I, uh, I came here. So in 2014, I came during FIFA, and I came for one month to Brazil. And uh, it was a great time because the country here was so excited that uh, FIFA was here, and it was all over the country, and there was just excitement, right? So it was a great time. There was many parties in the street, and, uh, and in your house. And in your house. Yeah. how we support the national team. Yes. And then we lost everyone. <laughs> <laughs> but it was it was a fun time. I stayed in Bahini, so I was here for one month, and I stayed in Bahini. You know where Bahini is? Yes. So here's some pictures of us. But it was a it was a great time. It was no beard, junior no beard. And then uh, I was here for a month in, four, in 2014. Six months later, I decided that I was going to uh, live here. Uh, and I sold my car. I uh, sold furniture. I, got I didn't know how long I was going to be gone from the United States. So I left everything and came here. And one of the reasons was Alini and Junior's wedding. So uh, this is pictures from their wedding. Uh, our friend Flavia, and that was that was awesome to be part of their wedding. So, next slide, Lenny. Let's see. So, studying Portuguese. So, one of the ways that I stayed here is by a student visa, right? So that's how some people go to the United States from Brazil. They go on a, st a student visa to study. So the same thing here. I had a student visa uh, in Brazil. 
and I studied at Puki. Does anyone know Puki? So uh, I studied there for about a year. The reason that I put this slide up here, one of the reasons is I want you all to understand um, part of my experience here was disappointing because <laughs> in the classroom they taught us Portuguese, uh, the correct Portuguese, the proper Portuguese. But when you go out into the streets, that's not the Portuguese that's being spoken. <laughs> so, so it makes it extremely difficult to learn one thing in the class, but then take it to the street, and you don't really understand what is going on. Do you agree? I definitely agree. Right? Like, like obrigado. He learned obrigado. So it's these it's these things that um, it's great to have the proper education, but you have to start somewhere, right? So I think for all of you to keep in mind. Don't take things too seriously. It's okay to uh, make some mistakes. It's okay to not be perfect. Even there's some times when junior is not perfect. Um, and we've seen several times, you know, people uh, might say something, oh, junior, this wasn't right. And it's some person who is online, who is hidden behind a computer saying, oh, he's not right. Well, this doesn't matter, okay? <laughs> what matters is getting into it and practicing. Okay, because we're also practicing. I, I don't have perfect English, and you all don't have uh, proper Portuguese some yeah. of the time, right? So I think breaking that down, don't look at it so seriously. Don't get caught up on little things, because those little things are going to stop you from practicing and uh, using English to communicate when traveling, etc. So don't be afraid to make mistakes. Don't be afraid to uh, not have uh, perfect English because Americans don't have perfect English, right? So <clears throat> do not take language so seriously. It's, it's great to learn, and you all are here because of that, but don't get caught up on those little things because that's just going to, it's going to create a barrier for you, okay? So that's kind of why I had that up there. So some of the places, I put this one up here because I wanted to talk about some of the places I've been to in Brazil. So I've been to Rio twice. Everyone has, have people been to Rio in here? Yeah. How many people have been to Rio? Uh, not even like half the room. <laughs> I think sometimes Brazilians are scared <laughs> of, oh, no, of yeah, Rio. Yeah, I've been to Rio yeah. because of the violence. But I, I love Rio. Uh, Rio. I, I like the... Um, it's like when I tell people about Brazil and Rio, it's like what you think, what you think Brazil is, you know, is the picture of Christ and, and things. And it's that, like what you see in the pictures of Rio, to me, it, it matches when you go and visit there. So Rio is beautiful. I have been to um, Minas Gerais. So I have been there to uh, uh, Poço Alegre, a small town. My friend is from a small town uh, there in Minas, and so I've been there. I've been to Campinas. Where else have I been? Bahia. I'm going to Bahia on Monday. So I'll be traveling to Bahia uh, <coughs> for next week. So that's a new place that I haven't been, is Bahia. So I'm looking forward to going to Bahia. Did you like more Sao Paulo or Rio? Sao Paulo is to live, and Rio is to visit. <laughs> so, so cultural differences. So I have a list when I was preparing the presentation. I have a list on my phone of some of, some of the cultural differences. And I'm going to let you guys, if you can think of something that I don't have on the list, then I want you to pop your hand up, put your hand up, and uh, share cultural differences between the United States and Brazil. I'm trying to make this bigger on my phone. Okay, so the first one I have on the list is pizza. <laughs> right? So the pizza is different in terms of taste here, but there's another big difference about pizza. Who knows the difference uh, with pizza 
in the United States and pizza in Brazil? Anyone want to respond? Cheesy, yes, yes, but uh, how we eat it. Yes, so in the United States, people eat pizza with the hand. And here in Brazil, nobody eats with the hand. <laughs> yeah. It's not cheesy. Yeah, it's not cheesy. Leftovers. So, so, some t- so sometimes now, even in the U.S., depending on the pizza, I'll eat still with a fork and a knife. Because it's nice. It's nicer to eat with a fork and a knife. Especially if it's really hot. Same way as, same way as hamburger. Here we eat hamburgers with napkins. But in the U.S., most of people, they eat hamburgers holding with their right. hands. They it's kind of like Brazilians are, uh, uh, don't want to touch their food. Right. But in the United States, you know, people just, just go, in for, go in for it, mm-hmm. right? <laughs> so another cultural difference, which is better here in Brazil than in the United States sometimes, I think that uh, hygiene is way better in Brazil because everyone takes showers all the time. In Brazil, Brazilians take showers in the morning, afternoon, all the time. I don't think I've ever met a smelly Brazilian. I'll just go to set at 6 p.m. Yeah, like Melissa said, go to the set at 6 p.m. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Let's go now. So another cultural difference, uh, restaurants, right? So uh, in the United States, we tip. So when you're done uh, at your table at a restaurant where you sit down and have a waiter or waitress, uh, you have to tip. Uh, now it's um, 20% of the bill. You, p- you add to your check and you pay at the end. Here in Brazil, it's different because uh, I think it's built in, like 10% is built in. 10%. Yeah. Which is... This is better in Brazil. <laughs> what happens if you don't chip, if you don't tip? Well, I don't know. I I've never experienced that. No. Well, you should try. It makes master class. You come back and tell us. <laughs> <laughs> I think it depends on your waiter or waitress, I guess. Yeah. But if you're going to go back to that restaurant, then and want good service, then you're probably not going to have good service if you're known as the person who doesn't tip, uh-huh. right? Do they tip in Disney? Yes. Okay. Now, in my it, generally, it has been that tipping is always an option. You decide how much you want to leave. It used to be fifteen percent, then it was eighteen percent. Now it's twenty. Sometimes I see more. Mm-hmm. But in Miami, I was just in Miami a, a few months ago, and they were actually adding in, like in Brazil where they add in the 10% automatically, they're adding in 18% automatically, which is kind of crazy to me. The other thing with restaurants is time at the table. Here in Brazil, you sit down at a table for dinner and you could be there for three hours. <laughs> and in the United States, it's, okay, you're there for 45 minutes, you're, you're going, you're, you're done, right? And the waiter or waitress is like, pay your, it's time to go, <laughs> right? Ah, well, they, um, Vanessa said, do they ask you to leave? Some might. <laughs> Did it happen to you? Yeah. When we went to IHOP, the next of Tavian and I, the app was to leave. Oh, see? But we were there for like... You were being Brazilian. Hours. Yeah. <laughs> so the other thing, the last one I have for cultural, and then we should open it up, and, and if anyone else has... An, um, any other thoughts but personal space right so Brazil I think Latin America in general the personal space is if I'm going to see Vanessa on the street then I come in and we kiss (laughs) Uh, but for most of the United States this doesn't happen unless you're in Florida I'm used to it because I'm in Florida so it's all Latin America right in Florida so I'm used to this but in other parts of the United States the personal space and how close you are to somebody uh, there's more room generally right okay so any other cultural differences that you can think of between the United States or junior do you have can you think of any 
Sports, yes. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I would say that sports because here it's soccer all year long. Soccer in January, February, March, April, and I think Christmas, New Year. That right? was one of my oh. that was one of my questions when I was here. I was like, how, "When's your soccer season?" <laughs> we don't and, have soccer, and there's season. no season. <laughs> it's all the year. Because in the U.S., we have football season, we have basketball season, we have uh, baseball, baseball season, and it's certain times of the year, and everyone starts to look forward. If you're a sports fan, uh -huh. you start to look forward to that time of year. But here. Soccer, soccer all, all the time. time. Yeah. Which sport do you like most? Well, I'm not really a sports guy, but I prefer. I would prefer soccer. soccer. Football. football. Yeah. I don't understand American football. <laughs> <laughs> I have a question. You were talking about greeting people. How mm -hmm. do you greet people? Because we greet like. Kissing. Yeah, we kiss. In Rio, they kiss three times. Yeah. Three. Three. Mm -mm. Yeah, one, two, three. That's a lot. It, it's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I think it depends on the, the situation. If you're a business, if it's a professional setting, then of course it would be a handshake. But uh, if you are friends, it would be a hug or nothing at all. Uh, but no kissing. No kissing. Hmm. Yeah. The other thing uh, that's different while on that note, because that's kind of boring. <laughs> the other thing that I would say is in the U.S., you here in general have one month vacation, right? Once you are with a company for, what, a year, then after that first year you get one month of vacation. That's not how it works in the U.S. So I just, uh, the company I work for, we just brought on uh, a new employee who's working with me, and she gets a total of 13 days uh, off uh, during the year. So 13 days only off, and that starts after her first uh, 90 days. So it's okay. Um, but it's not the whole month. Uh, at 13, or 13? Thir 13. 13. 13. 1, 3. 13. That just happens to be what it, it is for her. But... Um, it's, this is very different, I think. What about uh, holidays? Because here... A ho a you have a holiday for everything. <laughs> <laughs> the holiday here is on Thursday. We don't, we don't work on Friday. Right. Sometimes... Don't Tuesday. Oh, yeah, on Tuesday. We don't work on Friday. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> so this and is a cultural Fridays, difference, too. Yeah. No work. Yeah. What about the U.S.? So if the, we had a holiday on a Tuesday, which is rare that a holiday would be on a Tuesday, but if it is on Tuesday, you would work Monday... And sometimes you would get a half day. Like if it's Christmas on a Tuesday, you should have, hopefully your boss is nice enough to let you go at noon the day before. But yeah, it's it's different. It's not. Uh, do Americans have thirteen salary? Because here we have thirteen salary. Right. We do not have thirteen. No. Salary. No. You you kind of. Sad. You kind of have because you are paid for like weeks, right? Like two weeks, you get paid. Like it's different from here, right? We receive salary after a month. A month, yeah. We get paid. Well, we get paid weekly. We get paid every. Um, but it's not. But the thirteenth is like an additional from the twelve months. But, but but if you do the math, like sometimes uh, uh, it's like four weeks a month. One month is four weeks or five weeks, and when you do the math, is, it is the same. Gotcha. Um, yeah, I can understand that. Yes, I didn't realize that that's the way. So that yeah, yeah I guess that, yeah, that, it evens have, out. Yeah. yeah. People say like it, it is an extra. But it's not really. It isn't. Gotcha. It just is like a saving. Like yeah. kind of is. I have this extra money, but not really. Uh, for example, you receive it weekly. In, in your rate, you pay weekly or per month? Uh, so we get paid for rent. We pay monthly. So generally, it's uh, the first of the month for rent. Yeah. Can you choose the day you're gonna pay for the rent or no? Mm, no. no it's I, most the of the times, it's the first. first. Yeah, it's the first of the month. I have a question about the hospital. 
hospital. Yeah, what, what happens when you have to see a doctor and you don't have money for pay for it? I mean, are you yeah, worried about it? Health right, health insurance. So if you did not have health insurance, then you go to the doctor. Uh, you could go to the emergency room, and there are laws that say they will have to take care of you. Um, if you don't pay, then uh, they're most likely going to send you the bill, uh, and you would have to maybe come up with payment plans uh, for it. Um, but this is public. But it's not it's not really it's not it's private yeah it's private. so there's the government controls um how people can get access to it now you know with obama they uh control okay these we're going to allow more people to get it but it's still something that is a private thing so but yeah uh they're not going to reject you there, you're, if you go to an emergency room, they're not going to send you away. There's laws saying that they can't, but you still would be stuck with the bill, right? So if the bill, if you don't pay the bill, then it potentially could go on your credit. So in the United States, credit is everything, and your credit score, and uh, basically the credit score tells a company how well you make payments, right? If you are are making your payments properly and you're responsible. Okay, good question. The other thing, what was the other thing that I was going to say? There was another difference. I don't remember, but it was on my list, but it was, I, I had to rewrite my list, but I, I remember being on my first list. And so hopefully it will come back to me. about the car's plate. I mean, when you receive a... Oh, yeah, that's boring. That's boring. That's a question. That's a question. I'm here about... I have a from Ben Shapiro. Uh, my question is, Obamacare was a good experience or a bad experience? Obamacare? Yes. I think it, de I think it depends on who you are. And um, I think people think, oh, it was so cheap. It's not necessarily the cheapest thing. It depends on how much you get paid. If you get paid a good amount, it's not going to be very cheap for you. So it's not like they were giving away free health care or health care paid for by the government. Uh, if it depends on how much money you make, and that's, that's whether it's a benefit for you or not. Or you could just look at the private, private uh, health care, and um, sometimes that's more affordable. And Obamacare, uh, you can only sign up certain times of the year. It's towards the end of the year you can sign up. Uh, there are some private health care that allow you to sign up uh, any time throughout the year, and they're, they're pretty affordable. So. Yo, I ain't here for the money, I ain't here for the fame. Though it might be nice to own a jet plane, I'ma do it all for you. Come along and see us 